Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to see how to import a specific range of cells from a particular Excel sheet in a particular workbook into your Microsoft Access database. Today's question comes from Jennifer in Marysville, Washington, one of my gold members. Jennifer says, how can I import a specific range of cells from a particular sheet in my Excel workbook into Microsoft Access? That's what I just said. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> now, this will be a two-part lesson. First, we're going to do the expert method. It's not quite beginner. Importing data is something I cover in my expert classes because there's some nuance to it. Um, but you don't have to know any programming for the expert version. I kind of put expert between beginner and developer, right? And developer is where we use some VBA. So we're going to do both methods. First, I'm going to show you how to do it without any programming. We'll use the step-by-step -step wizard, and then we'll do it with VBA with the transfer spreadsheet command. All right, here we go. Now for you expert users, if you've never imported data into Excel before, go watch this video first. It covers all the basics of importing. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. And we're gonna go to external data, new data source from file. I'm gonna pick Excel. All right, this thing comes up. They're gonna browse to wherever your folder is that's got the file in it and pick the file. So I'm gonna click on browse. Let's do my student grades. Now you'll see a little preview comes up over here. You can resize this and you can look through the different sheets that you have in here and click on them but this doesn't really do anything okay you can click and look at stuff but nothing that you do here in this preview matters okay i'm going to hit open and then we're going to pick import the source data into a new table so we're going to basically take that spreadsheet data put it in where we want it in the table in here hit okay now here's where you can pick which worksheet you want you can pick worksheet or named ranges I do have a named range in here. We'll talk about that in a bit. All right, show worksheets. I'll pick the English 101, which is the second one. Let me show you a copy of the spreadsheet here. This is it, real simple, right? I got Math 101 and I got English 101. There's two sheets inside this workbook file. All right, so let's import English 101. I'll hit next. The first row contains the column headings. Yep, those will become your field names. I know they're not named perfectly because there's spaces in them. We'll deal with that later. Next. Now here's where you can go and you can pick each column. You can set the data type for it. All right, student, short text is fine. Test one, it defaults numbers to double. That's okay if you've got uh, like, you know, 92.6 or whatever in here, or you can change these to long integers if they're just long integers or whatever else you wanna do. Just click on each field, right? I talked about this in the other video. Next, all right, let access add a primary key. If you want an auto number over here, yeah, sure, great. Or you can pick your own. Next, and then what table do you want? I'll call this English 101T, just because that's how I like to name things, and then hit finish. If you wanna save these steps, you can, so you can do this in the future really quickly. I cover that in the other video as well. And there we go, we have a nice table, there's our data. Okay, now, that works great if you want to be able to just go through that wizard every time you wanna import it. Okay, or you can use a saved import, that's fine. But if you wanna do it with a single button, where you click a button and bang, there's your data, that's gonna involve a little bit of programming. So let's close this, and I'm gonna delete that table. Get out of here, where's delete? There it is, goodbye. Now, what do we need to do for the programming part? Well, if you've never done any programming before, go watch this video first. It's my intro to VBA. It takes about 20 minutes to get you up to speed. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA. It's not hard. And also go watch this video. This is where I introduce you to the do command transfer spreadsheet command, which we're going to use more of today. Again, these are free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them. Come on back. All right. So the VBA solution, let's go into our... Design view, I'm gonna close up the ribbon. Make some room here to work. And I'm gonna just use this hello world button, right click build event. That's gonna bring up the code builder, there you are. And we'll say status importing. Okay. The command is do command dot transfer spreadsheet. It's that guy, transfer spreadsheet. Okay, comma. Now. You could pick, there's a whole bunch of different versions here. If you just hit comma, it's gonna use the default one, which is good because in the future, 
right, in future versions of Access. If they add new ones, then it'll just use the current one. Sometimes you do need a specific version. There are some older commands that aren't supported anymore. So if you have to, for example, you know, you got to use Excel 5, great. But if not, just hit comma and it will always use the current one. Make sure there's nothing there. Use the default. Okay, next is the table name. That is the name of the table in your database where you want to put the data. All right, let's just say I'm going to call this my uh, Excel import T because nine times out of 10, when I import stuff from Excel, I don't put it directly in the table that it's going to. I usually put it in a temporary table. Then I use some action queries to put that data where I want it. So I'll like import from Excel into a temporary table, use an append query, let's say, to put it in my actual wherever it's going. Okay, so usually importing is a temporary step. Next is the file name. I know you can't see all that. Let me slide the video window over there. Got some more space. Next is the file name, which I'm just going to copy and paste. For me, it's that. That's the full path and file name of your spreadsheet. Okay. And if you don't know how to find that, well, just go. You're, you're in the wrong class. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Open up an Explorer window to wherever your file is. There it is. And then click up here in the address bar. That'll give you the path right there. And then just put a slash and then the name of your file after it. Okay. Okay. All right, running out of room here, so I'm going to hit comma, and then, oh, there's one more thing I want to do for now. Uh, actually, let's put a little line break here. Move that over. There we go. All right, so we got file name, and the next thing is, sorry, I got to keep moving, but the little window is popping over there. Okay, the next thing is has field names, and that basically means do you want to use these column headers in your spreadsheet as the field names in your field. Yeah, okay, sure. Why not? We'll say true. All right, let's leave it at that for now. Let's save it, throw in a debug compile once in a while, and then let's come over here, close this, open it back up again, and hit the button. Importing, and then you should see over here, there's my Excel import T, and it looks good. Now, we didn't specify anything about the inside of that file, what we wanted to import, and as you can see, it grabbed the data from the first sheet that it finds, in this case, Math 101. Well, what if I want English 101? Well, that's where that next option comes in. Let's close this. Let's delete the table. Delete. Let's go back to our VBA editor. All right, comma. The next thing here is range. What's the range? Well, for the range, we can specify an, an actual range if you want to. For example, let's say I do, uh, uh, I do A1 through E8. Okay, A1 through E8, you know how to do an Excel range, right? All right, that's gonna be A1 through E8. Actually, let's do E6, we'll just get through Wharf. All right, A1 through E6. All right, save that, let's run it now and see what happens. All right, there's my Excel import and there's, oh, did we get E6, what do we get, E6? Oh, I'm on the wrong sheet, see, I'm still on the English sheet. Let's get here, okay, we got through Uhura, good. All right, so that's exactly what I told it to import. Now, let's say I want to get the stuff off the English 101 sheet. Well, referencing different sheets in your command here is very similar to how you reference different sheets in Excel itself. Let's say you want to just import the entire English 101 sheet. Okay, it's going to look like this. English 101 dollar sign. The dollar sign says that's the sheet that I want. Okay. And if I run it now, save it, come over here, hit the button. There you go. It imported the entire English 101 sheet. See? You could do the same thing with a range, too. Let's delete this again. You can say, I want English 101, A1 through, let's see, who do we want? Again, let's get through Wharf. E6. Right? E6. Oops, not E7. E6. There we go. Save it and run it. And there we go. We got through wharf. Okay. So that's how you do a range and then a different sheet and then a different range on a sheet. The only thing left is what about a named range? If you're not familiar with named ranges, you can set up a range in your sheet anywhere and give it a particular name. For example, I have one that I call, where is it? Come here. I have one that I call grades and it's right there. Why there? I don't know. 
<laughs> let's say over here on English 101, let's select Riker through Jordy and just their first two tests. And I'm gonna give this a name, let's call it uh, Riker G. Okay, so now I made a named range right there called Riker G. It's just those cells on just that sheet. So now if I come back over here, again, let's delete that import table and let's change our code. Now I want to import Riker G. Okay, save it, come over here, hit the button and it will import just those cells. And look at that. Okay, see, look at that. It made the uh, the column headings, it because we use that true instead of changing it to false, it made that column heading the name of the fields, which is not desirable in this case. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go back over here and make this false. So it does not use the first column as the names of the fields. Ready, and there you go. It's F1, F2, F3, but at least that's better than this being Riker and this being 99 and so on. So that's what that option's for. All right, so there you go. That's, that's how you do it. If you'd like to learn more, I do have a lot of Excel classes too. I know most of what I do is access, but I cover named cells and ranges in my Excel Expert Level 1 class. I cover a lot more with importing data from Excel into Access, starting in Access Expert Level 20 continued in 21. And of course, I've got tons and tons of different access developer lessons on my website. I think I'm up to 45 now, different levels of developer classes. So if you wanna learn how to program in VBA for Microsoft Access, this is your place to do it. But that's gonna do it for your tech help video for today, folks. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors, First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guide. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. 
And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.